Hello, welcome. I'm going to start a color along out of Romantic Country Scenes by Teresa Goodridge. So, um, I had a few picks out of this book that I thought would be fun to do because I only have that one colored page in here. Um, but for today, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the cafe page. So it is one that is colored on the back, so if you need color reference or to know what anything is, you have this great page here. Um, I am going to do red like this just because I like the classic kind of look, but other than that I'm not really going to follow it a whole lot. So the first thing I'm going to do, and like these, I was looking to see if these were wood, which I guess they are. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my wood colors. Um, and you can see up here between the planners, they just kind of used a dark brown and blacked everything out. Oops, sorry about the glare. So I'm not going to start up there, but I am going to kind of put in my wood around here. Um, so my dark is going to be dark umber. And what I'm going to do is the where she has all the darkest ink, and I should probably bring it down. Okay, so I'm gonna, again, um, where she has her darkest is going to be my darkest color. Now, because I already know I'm doing this red, I'm gonna use a little more of a red tinted wood. Now, I'm not gonna color my wood red, but it's gonna have that reddish tone to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and darken behind this bush. I'm just going to get this kind of how I want it. Make sure I have everything colored. I want colored. Okay, and I'm going to do this side over here because I am going for a little bit of symmetry. I don't want one to appear, appear too much darker than the other. See, this one has more brown on it, so I'm just going to bring some of these out a little. It's not a huge deal, but makes my eyes happier. Okay, then we're going to go chocolate. So dark umber and chocolate. And again, I'm going for bold. I am. I want this wood to catch your eye. Okay. Excuse me. Burnt ochre. And you can see I'm leaving some white. So it doesn't really matter where your colors, like where you bring them out. Um, just going kind of random. I just want to make sure I leave some white. Mineral orange. So this is some bright and vibrant wood here we have going on, especially compared to the colors they used on the back. But when I start getting my greens and reds in, it won't feel so bright. It's just because it's the only thing on a white page and I used dark colors. So if you have anywhere you want to fix up or you feel looks weird. Got a couple white spots here. I'm going to fill in with my dark. Same on this side. All right. So now I'm going to work this wood across here. And like I said, I'm kind of going section by section um, because I want to. I want it to be even. I'm not rushing, and I'm eyeballing everything here to make sure 
it looks like we used the same wood when we built our store here. So I hope everyone is joining the color alongs. I know they're, I'm kind of off to a slow start this year. Um, I tell you what, January like flew by. It was Christmas a week ago and now we're halfway through. <laughs> so um, we'll be getting back on track. So if you have suggestions or requests, they are always appreciated. I know Teresa's usually do well, so I figured I'd do one out of romantic scenes for those that wanted to have a Valentine page in. It's Valentine-y, but it doesn't have to be if you're not into that kind of thing. So I know Valentine's can not always everybody's favorite holiday. Okay, this is going to look great. So now we're going to go, make sure I'm on camera here, press this bottom a little, again, oh, don't be like me and color out of the lines, I mean that'll be colored too, but Okay, now notice our sections are a little smaller, so we're going to go very light on the chocolate. We still want it in there, right? Because we want to match this wood up here. We don't want it to look weird anywhere. Or that our wood has suddenly changed colors. So we're just building in our layers a little lighter. A little thinner, I should say. Not lighter. We want that dark feel. Just a little, just a little thinner. All right. So sorry about all the wiggle in there. I'm lefty. So now I'm peeking. These are glass. So I'm kind of going to take this dark umber and build in my door here. I don't know for sure. Again, sorry about the wiggling. <laughs> I just needed to get that little section in there because I can't myself tell what I have going on. So again, this is glass. We can see the table carries through. So I'm gonna sharpen this a little more. Hopefully without breaking it here. I am going to try to run my dark color down this wall. Now that is a very squiggly, not very straight line, but the good thing about wood and the way the wood grain works is they're usually not straight and perfect either, so I don't think it'll be too noticeable. So notice I am coming down a little right here with my dark, which I need to do a little more right here too. That's just to create the shadow of this store thing coming down the top. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on this side where I got a super sharp tip. I'm going to run it down these lines. Now again, that's glass because the table comes through. We're going to go with this one, not pressing very hard, don't want to break my tip on there either. Alright, and then we're going to do the cracks of these door here. So I don't know what they did, they did a wood door too, so sit. Uh, same thinking there anyway. Um, if you ever come to Yellowstone National Park, I am located right next to Yellowstone National Park. And um, like Thermopolis, Wyoming, which we have the hot springs is what they're famous for in the Dinosaur Museum. And like Jackson Hole, which is where you're 
you go skating and we have the arch made out of antlers everybody takes pictures of um, you will see tons of these little stores made of wood <laughs> so that's kind of why it popped into my mind um, everything is log cabins and wood benches and part of the mountain aesthetic I guess Okay, so I'm going to shadow this one. Now the reason I put my dark over her swirlies is because that way you can't really see the lines. It just looks like wood. That's the look I'm going for there. I'm going to turn this light just a little. Maybe too much. Oh, sorry, it was like shining right in my eyes. All right, so we're gonna bring in the same color. So now our chocolate. Now again, these are very thin areas. So sharp points and thin layers. So notice I'm staying as close to my dark as I can, um, but it's not a huge deal because it will just add to the wood look, the color variation. So same thing going down. The middle here. I haven't shaded the actual door part. I am going to put a little more here because um, I want this to look like it's kind of sitting in on the door. building in that color. I'm going to sharpen my burnt ochre. So again, I'm going to run it down. And you'll kind of start to see the effect I'm getting here. And if we need to go back in and darken anything, we can. Now I'm just kind of randomly pulling this orange out in certain places because that will create our highlights. Okay. Again, just kind of pulling that orange out in some places. We just don't want it to look too, uh, like a pattern. I'm gonna sharpen this a little. And we're gonna put in our orange. I really need to use this wood combo more. I haven't actually used it a whole lot. Okay, so as you can tell, I'm just kind of going back, putting that dark back in where I think it should go. Okay, bringing in that orange. checking the time on the video here okay so you'll uh, you'll see that um, we're kind of getting the wood look built in here um, personally I'm gonna add some more chocolate right here And I love how this, I love this chocolate pencil. It just goes over everything in layers so easy. Okay, and this just helps with that little bit of transition between the chocolate and the orange. Uh, I'm also going to take my 
dark umber and darken that right there a little bit. And I really want this piece to be shadowed just because it's kind of where that wall and door meet. So I'm creating that shadowed hinge look, which is what I want. Okay, I'm going to turn it a little. And then somewhere right here caught my eye that I missed with this orange. Okay. Sorry, squirrel. But I, I always see them and then I'm like, oh yeah, I'll go back and fix that when I'm done, done recording. And I don't. And then they ended up staying there. And then on my finished pages, I'm like, oh yeah, well, that, that spot should have been. I gotta fix them when I see them or I'll forget. So again, just kind of shadowing that line there, making it look like it's sunk in a little more. Darkening. Darkening. All right, I like it. I think it's looking good. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and put a window in real quick while we're right here. Just so I can do those off camera as well. So you can do windows in gray or blue or, you know, if you've got a pink store on the inside, you can do pink, whatever you fancy. I'm going to do blue. Um, but I'm going to go very light. So this is non-photo blue. And I'm sticking to the very edge of the windows here. And I almost forgot this was one. Now I'm going to try not to get my brown because if I smear that brown, um, it's going to smear through my window here. So trying to avoid that. I'm going to come in and round out my corners a little. That is optional. You don't have to. Um, just like the look it gives on windows. Again, very light layer. Coming in a little on that corner. I bring this down just a little here. Bring this one out just a little further. I'm going to leave this one pretty thin just because it's a pretty thin window. And then this is a window as well. So sorry about all the wiggle in here. I'm trying to get situated. So I'm, I'm doing my dark under these U's, or arches, upside down arches, because um, they're leaving a kind of shadow on the window. The shadow's not getting as much light there. Or the, yeah. Must be my bedtime. My words aren't coming out anymore. Okay, so I want to keep that consistent across the top here. Now this is window, remember, down this side. I guess I should put in the rest of my blue instead of just abandoning it here. Uh, I'm not sure. See, these are dark, so I'm not sure if they're supposed to be windows because they did their windows so dark. But I'm going to go ahead and play with their windows here. I'm going to come down the side again, trying to stay out of that brown. You may not notice it with this blue that you've got brown in it, but when you go to mix it with your lighter color, it will pull that yellow out. I have done it to myself before. So I'm going to fix up a little right here. 
just to prevent that from happening, hopefully, where I got a little yellow on the outside. Alright. And I got some on there again. Um, usually I use my automatic eraser, but I need to put a new battery in it and I keep forgetting. Every time. Keep pulling out this a little bit. Okay, so there's the beginning of our windows anyway. Then I'm going to pull 1023. I'm not sure if it's sky blue or cloud blue light, or sky blue light I mean. Because mine is so small now. I've sharpened the name off. Um. right over the top of that blue and up just a little. So circular motions pulling up, pulling that pigment toward the middle of our window here. So at the top I'm pulling downwards. To the side I'm pulling out. These littler ones are a little harder because I do want to leave that white in the middle if I can help it. So I'm just kind of blending them out a little, as little as I can here. Oh, I forgot the whole window in the middle of my door. So that window will be the same process as all these others. If I don't get to it on camera. Okay, we're going to come over here to this big window and get this one blended out. Now you'll notice this window still looks a little harsh. It's still a lot of blue. But we're going to tone it down one more. Oh, I don't know if this will. Yep, there's just not enough battery in that to pull up any ink. Again, circular motions, pulling towards the middle of the window. And I am coloring over whatever is on the edges. So it looks like they are behind the glass. So I'm gonna pull this down a little. Now your effect on your window, um, the more you pull it in, you know, the more farther out your glass will look. Going for just kind of a light, dainty window look, not necessarily filling the whole thing with blue. Um, if we take a peek here, they did the same thing. You can see where they put blue dark on the edges, light toward the middle. Um, theirs is just a lot darker. Kind of doesn't look like a window to me. Almost looks like the inside of the store is blue. Um, pretty combo, but I just want mine a little bit lighter. So here we go. Not pressing hard. It kind of looks like it because I'm trying to hold on to this really tiny pencil here and not get wood color on it, but not pressing hard. Um, this color does smear your ink in these books, just so you know. I found that out many times as well, and I still manage to hit it every time. Okay, turning a little one more time. So we want that blue blended out pretty good. So I'm just kind of making sure all my lines are out. don't want too distinct of a color change. So I kind of get everything built in and then I go back and play with it a little bit. Right, there are our windows. 
times. So then I'm going to pull a white. You could do a very light gray green light. You could do, you know, whatever. But I'm going to go ahead and do white. And on this big window, I'm not going to bring it all the way in. So you can also do this last after you color everything. Um, but this just lightens everything and brings it one step closer to blended together. Just like that. So you could also put your windows in before your wood if you want. I just kind of did my wood because I wasn't sure what was all wood. Working it out as I went. A nice foggy blurred feel. All right, so that is gonna be that. I hope everyone is excited for this color along. I know I kind of didn't announce it. I just uh, I had a couple planned and some things happened and I had to switch it up a little bit and this is where I landed. So. felt like a nice universal page. So questions, comments, anything like that. Again, if you have anything you'd like to see, see more of, anything like that, let me know. And I hope to see you for part two. Thanks for watching.